Country music has square dancing. The club has pole dancing. In punk rock, we have slam dancing. Punk rock has so many offshoots and subgenres, bro, and each and every single one of them enjoy a little bit of moshing and stage diving, otherwise known as slam dancing. Today, we're gonna take a little bit of a look at a screamo set that takes place in a literal boxing ring. But before we do, hey, hi, hello, my name is Dan Frampton. Welcome back to Pit Pros. If you comment within the first three hours, I will reply. Okay, let's take a close look at the mosh maneuvers from that famous catalyst boxing ring set. And before we introduce any of the slammers, before we introduce any of the moves, I gotta introduce the lumberjacks. Now, in a normal DIY scenario, there's gonna be like a mosh pit type area, but this is no ordinary DIY space. This is a boxing ring. So the people surrounding it, I've called the Lumberjacks. Now just take a look at how many of them they are and how crazy they are in this first clip I'm calling the Lumberjacks. Everybody just surrounding the ring, leaning on the ropes full weight. Absolutely insane. If you look up here in the left hand area, just packed with slam dancers. And down here in the front where you get the guy with the monster t-shirt and the red t-shirt guy, everybody's just leaning all their weight on these ropes. And you gotta say, these turnbuckles must be so friggin' strong to support all of that. If we just go frame by frame, we're seeing them just head banging and going crazy. The left side, full of energy. The right side, full of energy. Everybody is going to go absolutely wild because they have a literal boxing ring in front of them. I've been playing a lot of Dragon Ball Spark and Zero recently, so I named this next slam dancer Kid Boo. But I changed the spelling a little bit, and here he is going old school and delivering a plancha. We'll watch as he goes old school here. Huge plancha. Beautiful, well executed, and then it goes into a backflip after a little bit of a crowd surf. That is a wonderful clip. As we see over here, Kid Boo is starting on a speaker or an amplifier of some sort. As we move ahead a couple frames, he gets a couple frames of balance on that rope that I'm going to constitute as going old school. And then from there, bouncing down into the ring, one at a time, little bunny hop. Clean, tope suicida, into a half turn, fluidly and effortlessly bounces down, and then up back into a crowd surf, just when you think he's gone. You're like, where, where'd he go? Where's Kid Boo? Oh no, he's still there. Emerges from the same maneuver, back and forth, there he goes. And you think, oh, it's just gonna be an easy dismount? Nah, steez up the wazoo with a backflip. Very incredible. Well done, Kid Boo. Next up, we got JC Cones with a clean plancha. Now let's break down that clip just a little bit just to see how exactly clean it was. Now, you're gonna need to look right behind the lead singer. This is where JC Cones is, and he's coming in with a full head of steam, and he's just going stride by stride with a lot of confidence, knows exactly where he's going. As you see the lumberjack in the front, taking full cover over here as he knows JC Cones is coming in with a clean something. He doesn't know what attack he's gonna get, but up, easy, hand goes on top. First contact made right there, very well done. Firmly planted as we move forward. JC Cones gets the hips up. I wanna get you over here, just take a look at where the hips are. Very good hip location, okay? And also you gotta take a look at where JC Cones is looking. He's got his eyes right on his next target where he's gonna land. Let's see him go. The hips go up, the arm goes up, the foot goes up, and then the hip comes down. Huge plancha maneuver, much damage to all the lumberjacks that surrounded him there, I'm sure. In this next clip, we're gonna see these two slam dancers that we've already met, JC Cones and Kid Boo, do a tag team attack. JC Cones on the outside here gives the gifts of the gods to the bass player as Kid Boo goes in for his sing-along. Incredibly well done. How perfectly executed can you get? 
Now, did you miss that? Over here, screen left, the masked individual. You see him, right? He's got a little bit of hair going on here. He's reaching down into the ring for something. I don't know what he's looking for at first, right? But you see him go down. He acquired an item, and here it is. He picks it up. He initially puts it on himself. But then he realizes in this moment right here, just take a look past the mask. You can tell this soul knows that he can't put a hat on top of a hat. This is gimmick infringement. This is too many gimmicks. You got the terror shirt. You got the JC Cones mask. And now you're putting on a top hat. You know that's way too many gimmicks. So he's like, I got to bestow this gift of the gods to the nearest king. And who's the nearest king that deserves this top hat? Yeah, it's the bass player. Now this bass player looks incredible with his little mustache, his little tied shirt. Mm, mm, mm. That's a ton of steez right there. That guy's charisma stat just went up easily by 50 points just right there by getting the gift of the gods from JC Cone. And then just then you think the clip is done but then, no, 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 right behind JC Cones pops up Kid Boo. Oh yeah, this guy knows the words. He's gonna blast his Kamehameha right now. Charging up his key, and then here it comes. Boom! One, two, three. Look at that face. The anguish. The sheer amount of ferocity coming from Kid Boo over there. I didn't know Kid Boo learned the Kamehameha, but there it is. This next clip speaks for itself and won't need much analysis or whatever. This is just the drummer given the classic, the patented bird flip attack. He's keeping the song going and he's delivering his attack. What more do you need? And then Kid Boo is coming in, Irish whip. Gets caught up, Tope Suicida gets lifted. Now there's a lot to kind of break down in that little clip. It is so chaotic. Okay, screen left right above me, we see Kid Boo coming in, right? We're gonna go ahead a couple frames. There's a hoodie goon behind him. You can't see him right now. He is obscured by Kid Boo himself. But there he is. There's the hoodie goon right there. Looks like he goes in to grab Kid Boo, but then gives him a little push. So I'm gonna call that an Irish whip. And then Kid Boo hits a slam dancer here. Gets caught up a little bit. It's hard to tell, but there's a little skirmish, a little scuffle behind the singer here before Kid Boo gets enough energy and enough key loaded into his soul to be able to blast off straight up into the air first and then over the shoulders into a pretty good Tope Suicida, if I do say so myself. And you honestly can't slow down this Kid Boo guy. He's going huge plancha, so much energy, you can't keep him down. Call him this next guy Smith Grind because he, he looks like a skateboarder. And Anyway, here comes Smith Grind with a normal plancha. Very normal Smith Grind. Not much to break down there. And then here comes the Kraken. I love the Kraken. Right away, we're going to see some beautiful maneuvers from the Kraken. He's going to deliver some crab punches and then go smoothly into a plancha. Let's just watch this happen, and then we'll break it down. Okay, so the Kraken, he is the shirtless individual in the very front of the ring over here, taking up all the spotlight. Gotta love it. Coming in, huge wild arm crab punches. Boom, stomp, crab punch. Boom, stomp, crab punch. Pivot. Really nice pivot, and then as he's pivoting, straight up vertical, a nice vertical on him. Uh, he's obstructed here a little bit by the singer, but then lands flat back, gets his arm up, gets a flat plank going. Feet come up to match, feet come up to match, beautiful. The form is nice, really well executed. The Kraken with an absolutely stunning combination. And if you think that combo was crazy, wait till you see what Red Legs has to deliver. That was absolutely massive. So I don't know if I need to explain who Red Legs is, but I will anyway. It is the individual with the red legs. And they happen to be very much obstructed right away. But you see, goes up vertical, hits a beautiful, almost like spin kick plancha. Really nicely, well done. You think they're done, hell nah. Gets a good couple fist pumps in the air there, then comes down, 
lands back in the ring on their feet, gets a good couple steps back, delivers one, boom, back elbow, and then off we go again, deep squat into a missile tope love it and then right behind red legs you gotta see this guy over here comes in with a superman punch from the heavens what a clip that is well done everybody involved and up next we got the radical rabbit delivering a left-leaning belly flop <laughs> hell yeah what a belly flop. Then 2015 Dean Ambrose from out of nowhere. Incredible. Then the singer with sweet chin music, boom, takes that person's fucking head clean off. And then this insane flurry. Spinning windmill helicopter. Crowd kill, crowd kill, crowd kill, crowd kill. Plancha from the bass player. Kid Boo, windmill back elbow, Plancha. Incredible, crazy ass flurry. Comes through again. <laughs> Tope Suicida eats cement. That is crazy. Now, you gotta meet the arch slammer coming from the heavens. Look, screen right as soon as this thing kicks in. Here he comes, the arch slammer. Boom. So much damage, so much obliteration. Mainframe with a fist pump crowd surf. He's gonna fix your computer. He's the leader of the IT. Fist pump, fist pump. He loves himself some catalyst. Then Frogo comes in with the boing boing. Dodge that traffic. And then this is the Kraken's last crack. Kraken, you rule, bro. The guitar toss. We gotta break down the guitar toss there. The band is doing their closer. Just off screen to the right is the guitar player, so keep your eyes there for a little bit. Oh, and there it goes. It happens really quick. So we'll take it frame by frame. Band is finishing up really good. Everybody's hyped up. We want more. Do something crazy, they're probably saying. And then the guitar player is like, yo, bet. I'm going to do something crazy. As the camera pans over, he's already mid-throw. And right here, in this frame right here, we see the guitar halfway in the air. The guitar player being like, I don't need this anymore boom and then a drumstick follows shortly after that and that's where you think it's gonna end the guitar player is like i just threw my guitar it's done it's over with i don't need to do anything else with this guitar right wrong introducing the guitar smash the guitar ends up making its way back to the boxing ring the crowd surfs in makes it its way to the guitar player smash he throws it down he's like oh no now i gotta go all the way with this don't i I gotta break this guitar now, don't I? I was just gonna grab it from the guy, but now I gotta go all the way with this thing. Alright. Good form, by the way. Kurt Cobain would be proud. He's like, now let me throw this fucking thing away. <laughs> Incredible set. I gotta say, I love Screamo happening in a boxing ring. It might be my favorite thing of all time. Catalyst has quickly become one of my favorite bands, and this is definitely the coolest set on the entire internet. I'm so glad that I dusted off this Pit Pros format to show you guys this amazing set that happened inside of a boxing ring. My audience is much bigger than it was back in the days when I used to do this series. So if you guys are into this kind of thing, I would gladly do more of it. It is kind of fun coming up with nicknames and calling the action of these mosh pits. And along the way, we get to learn about all these cool bands. It really is a win-win type situation, except for like all the drama that it typically causes. So let me know, do you like pit pros? Comment down below. I'm out of here for now. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and have a good one.